This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. When God calls anyone into any of these offices, He gives them the capacity to be able to minister at this level. And that is why it's important for we to begin to understand our place. You got saved to save. You are saved to save. You are saved to make a difference. You are saved to take a lead. You are saved to be relevant. You are saved to take the lead. You are saved to be an inspiration. So God has saved you because there is something unique about you that you're called to do. And sometimes people come into church or come into a ministry and they forget the purpose of why they are there. One of the primary purposes why you are here is for kingdom advancement. Don't forget that. This is not a shisha club. You are here. First, the primary purpose is for kingdom advancement. And that kingdom advancement occurred through worship and service. You are here first primarily for kingdom advancement. That is why you are here. And that is why it's important for you to take your walk with God serious as you can grow up to be effective. Nobody wants to have a child that is 20 years old but is behaving like one year old. No parents want to have that kind of child. You expect as they grow, they accept responsibility. You expect as they grow, they become reasonable. You expect as they grow, they are able to provide good leadership for themselves and also to inspire others. And that is what growth does. And you can be a Christian for 30 years, but you're not growing in the things of the Spirit. And that is why it's important for we to have a word foundation, a foundation of God's word, which is strategic for ministry. I cannot be effective in doing the work, what I do right now if I don't have a word foundation. A foundation of the word of God is strategic in being effective and being relevant. You can only be as relevant as uh, depending on the word of God you have as a person. If I don't have the word of God in me, anytime they ask me to do something in the church or in the kingdom, I see it as a burden. They are stressing me. They are putting pressure on me. But unknowing to you, you are only relevant when you're useful to God. You're only relevant when you're useful to God and humanity. So if I'm not useful to God and humanity, it means I'm not fulfilling my ministry. So here we saw that the fivefold ministry was given for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Every one of us is expected to know the aspect of the work of the ministry we are connected to. I can't just come to church and I don't serve, I don't get involved, I don't add. No. That's wrong. I don't come to church and then I just sit down. I'm not contributing. I'm not adding. I'm not relevant. That simply means I am limiting my possibility. And I have also trapped my potential with my decision and attitude. Because I have a potential in me. And that potential yearns for expression. That potential wants to comfort. 
And where your potential comes from is in the place of service. Your potential can only come from in the place of service. In the place of service, that's where your potential comes from. Many years ago, I used to go to a place to teach. And it's just a fellowship, a sister invited me. So I preached the first day, the people decided to retain me to be coming there to teach. So I took it as a job, I got. I was living with my dad then. So every Tuesday, I have to be there to teach. Whether it's raining, whether it's sun, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, I'm there. I started going there when I had no car. I have to enter bike. I have to enter taxi. I carry my Bible. I carry my diary. I was committed to it. So when I want to go, they would just give me 200 naira to help me pay back. I was so excited that I had an opportunity to save. The opportunity to save is the opportunity to release the greatness in you. That's how you release greatness. You release greatness by service. Because the beauty of service is to unlock the treasures of God in you. The beauty of service is to unlock the treasures of God in you. There are treasures now the scripture established that we have this treasure in the eighteen vessel. So I will go there to teach. I became committed to it. I became diligent to it. I see it as my office. So almost everybody in that complex begins to know me. And then a friend came to me that works in that establishment. I said, how much do those people give to you? I said, they give to me 200 naira. Ah, why are you taking that kind of money? That's where our problem starts from. Guide your heart as you don't ruin your life. When people bring suggestion and advice, filter it with God's word as you don't be the one to lose at the end of the day. How much are they giving you? As if I was doing it for the money. But that implanted a wrong seed in me. And this is why the company you keep can decide the future you can come into. Association is influence. Whether you agree with me or not. Whoever you are associating with has the tendency either to influence you for good or to influence you for destruction. Association is influence. So he asked, so when he said that, I decided to go and meet the people to say, the, the money you're giving to me is not enough. I never thought about that before. But somebody put that in me. This is why most people with great potential couldn't rise to the top because they violated the principles that will accelerate the expression of that greatness in them. You see, whatever you're doing for God is watching you. He's watching the heart at which you do what you do. It's not just what you do that attracts God. It's the heart in which you do it. The spirit and the attitude behind what you do, he looks at it. The spirit behind it. Why is she doing that? Why is he doing that? I almost ruined my life and ministry if God never helped me. Because that man planted that seed in me and if I was not careful that could have been the beginning of a lifestyle that God never expected me to have. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit who said, don't say that. Don't say that. Allow them to give whatever they want to give. But do you know from that place, I had relationships 
that started opening doors for me in different places. There are people I met that I could have not met them all through my life if not for the loyalty of service as a seed I sowed in that place. Service is not about a church. It's about you. It's about you. Imagine you're trying to start a company. You're trying to build a business. There is a tendency how you handle God's business is how you're going to handle yours. Yes. There's a tendency. It, it comes to the things of God that, man, I didn't sleep well yesterday. So I can't come to this service early. Oh, I have this challenge I'm dealing with. I don't think I can be committed at this level. Oh, I'm, I'm having some pressures. I don't think I can give myself to God. Because God is watching how you can serve even in pressure. When you are under pressure, when things are not working out, he's watching the mentality and the attitude you project. I had many needs in my life. I was living with my dad and 200 naira 1997 1998 but you see let purpose determine your thinking your decision and your action that what determine that purpose let purpose determine it. I've seen pastors who are so money minded until they ruin their ministry. They ruin the people see them, people are careful of relating with them. Because they are like tax masters. The act of trusting God should be foundationally in our thinking as we express our service. The act of, I'm trusting God, that's why I'm going to do it right. God is my source. So I render my service knowing that God is the reward of those who diligently seek him. That's the mentality. That I, I render my service, you know, this service I'm rendering, I'm not rendering it because of what someone could do for me. But I'm rendering it because I am calling to it. This is my calling. This is my destiny. This is my life. If you exalt money above God, you will risk your future. You will risk it. How much are they giving to you in that church? No. They should be asking, how effective are you in that church? Did you see the question? Huh? People who ask you, have they asked you, how effective are you in that church? How productive are you in that church? How effective? You don't really hear people ask questions like that. You don't easily hear people ask questions like that. How effective are you there? How productive are you there? And those are the kind of questions that make you reflect on time, on resources, and the opportunity that God has given to you. How effective are you there? How relevant are you there? Someone was talking to me some few days back from Canada and she said people always ask me why is it this one kind of thing you post on your page he told them that is the reason why I'm here if you go to that page it's like it's our ministry page 
is you don't see any other thing there. All you see is meetings, conferences we're doing around the world, things we're doing. That's all you see on that page. That is what she uses her page for. And God has continued to bless her. You know, there are people that come to a church, but they are ashamed of the church. Never be in a place you are ashamed of. Look for a place you can be proud of. Never be in a place you are ashamed of. Like, I'm not ashamed of what I'm doing. I'm not ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. So if you're in a place, you are ashamed of the place. There is no need being there. If you're in a place, you can't promote the place. Like Pastor C would say, you have no business being in a company you cannot promote. You have no business being in a company that you cannot promote. You can decide to promote other things, but not where you are. That means there is an, it's an indication that you are not properly investing your seed. Because if you truly want to rise in life, you need to invest in something or somewhere that could help you get to your destination. We're not here to do religion. This is kingdom. My vision is how I could, if three persons in this place catch what I'm saying, if five persons here catch what I'm saying, like right now, we're running a master class for 120 days on ministry online for different leaders around the world. The vision is that if I can raise successfully 50 leaders in different nations of the world, then these guys can take the fire around the world. Vision. What you see. What you see. What you promote is an indication of what you value. What you promote is an indication of what you value, what you promote. So the question is, what am I promoting? If you're looking for a perfect place on the face of the earth, you won't find it. If you're looking for a perfect pastor, you won't find it. They're all dead. Like a friend of mine that have a church in Jerry said something. He said, when people come into their church and he said, if you have not been offended here, you have not joined if you have not been offended here, you have, you have not joined this church. And it's a great church. If you have not been offended, because offense reveals you. Offense reveals what you stand for. Offense can either throw you out or make you ask yourself a question, does he want it? Does he want it? Something that happened more than five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, you haven't let that go. And so how do you deploy your potential? You need to ask yourself this question. How relevant is my life? What is the value of my life? Who is my life touching? What difference am I making with my life? Those who change history begins with a vision to break limitations. Those who change history, they begin with a vision to break limitation, those who change history, how can I impact my wall? How can I add value? What, what am I doing that will make me touch the wall around me? The money you're looking for is in the place of obedience. The resources. So the fivefold ministry is given for the equipping of the saints to train the saints as they can be relevant in the ministry. And one of the ways you become relevant is to have a vision to make a difference. Is to have a vision that even if I'm not here, somebody should remember that I had a landmark here. You're a different kind of Actors, you're a different kind of keyboardist, you're a different kind of drummer, you're a different kind of usher, you're a different kind of minister. The heart of God has become the foundational thinking for you. What, what is God saying? What is God doing in our generation? Things are blowing up in this country everywhere you turn. In the midst of all of this opposition, one key thing we shouldn't lose sight of is our kingdom assignment.
when you ask God to use you, one of the criteria you look at for is whether you can do any kind of job for him. When you ask God to use you, one of the criteria you look at for is, can you lift up this cup? Can you lift up that basket? Can you wash that toilet? Can you clean something? I was listening to Bob Yadian. He used to work in the media in Rema in those days. When you see how great people are, grew become an instructor serving in the ministry. He pastored for many years, large church, finally resigned from pastoring, now he's into teaching. According to him, he has three staff, just three persons that work for him. Discipling, equipping. At a particular point of your life, you can't think like a child or two. You need to throw away some childishness and begin to understand what it means to have legacy, landmark, becoming significant in life. You can't be a child all the time. You, you know, I called a friend yesterday. He used to teach in our Bible school many years ago. He said he's surprised that I called him. That he's not expecting a call from me. I said, well, how? Why? And then he said that when people are successful, you have to be careful how you relate with them. I said, oh God, who gave you that thought? Where did you get it from? People may do that, but I can't do that. I know people I grew up with. I know people that stood with me in ministry. I know people that helped me in pursuing the vision. But you see, our attitude has a lot to do with our ministry. Our attitude has a lot to do with the ministry God has given to us. There is something more important. And the most important thing is the assignment of God on your life. Not what this person said, what that person said. I don't care what they said. I care about what God is telling me. I don't care about what anybody is saying. What they are saying cannot be as relevant like my purpose. What they are saying cannot be as relevant as my vision. What they are saying cannot be as relevant as what God is calling me to do. You get trapped in what people are saying and you lose focus of living. That's wasting your life. That's wasting your life. You don't have time. This year, many of you is going to say happy birthday. Many of you are going to say happy birthday. This year, happy birthday, happy birthday. A, a friend told me a few days back, he said, Apostle, I'm more than 40. I'm more than 40. I'm entitled to my convictions. I'm more than 40. So at this point of my life, I'm no longer doing things I used to do. Why? Because you can't play all your life. You cannot play all your life. At a particular point of your life, you need to ask some basic question. Who is this person in my life? What kind of influence they generate around me? Like my pastor would say, no permanent friend, no permanent enemy, just permanent interest. You know, it took me more than five to ten years to process that statement. No permanent friend, no permanent enemy, but permanent interest. I said, what is this? I was thinking, my head was like, hum, hum, hum. no permanent friend, no permanent enemy, but permanent interest. So what is this, sir? No permanent friend. No permanent enemy. Just permanent interest. Then I begin to understand interest is a goal. What is the interest here? What is the vision? Where am I going to? Where am I going to? You need to come out from a, a mentality that is not going to project purpose. There is a mentality that somebody can have. He said, come, is this person schooled? Are they exposed? Are they enlightened? There is a mentality that is not of God. It's a demonic mentality. It's a demonic. Why do I call it a demonic mentality? It is a mentality that promotes self and not Christ. Any mentality that promotes self and not Christ is a demonic mentality. It's a demonic mentality. The master class were running of reason. No member of my church is there. All these people are different from different parts of the world. No member of my church is there. So I would have said, ah, if I train all these people finish now, they will just be in their country doing what that God has called them to do. That's stupid. A kingdom mindset 
reflects true greatness. A kingdom mindset reflects true greatness. Be among those who stand out irrespective of the resistance you face. Be among those. Be among those who stands out. That they will stand out no matter what is going on. No matter what is happening. They decided to stand out. I'm not going to be distracted with my need, with my problem. I'm going to focus my energy in making a difference. Kingdom. 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 I sent a video to some of our brethren. Uh, some persons, you know, five persons. Somebody was sharing how he would go for Bible study, the days of Philip Mokunga. He would go for Bible study by six in the evening, and the Bible study will end by 3 a.m. Did you hear what I said? And this person used to, uh, when he was alive, he used to come to TCC to preach for Pastor C. You know what it means for someone to start Bible study by 6 in the evening? And end by 3 a.m. <laughs> Pastor, they take time. Self. Pastor doesn't keep the time. That church, they don't keep the time. Then I can preach for 10 minutes. It's you that need me. I they tell you, now you need me. Me, I can preach for 10 minutes and just drive and lie down in my house and be watching movies. The things I need to be dropping. I've soon seen to a point that I'm in harvest season. So when you see me come here to teach, I came to help you. I came to help you. This year I came to help. What I'm doing is for your own good. A service started by 6 in the evening, 3 a.m. He said when they finish some time, that period, that they will lie down small and take small rest. Some people will start walking. They will start walking. If I tell the person who said this, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. You'll be, sh you'll be sh ah! Now this person, that's so God make him. He will start trekking a long distance. The next day, they will come back by 4 again in the evening. You think some people will just rise. Did they play? You think some people just come up and then they had a great ministry. They had a great life. Now, lie you, my brother, go and read their stories. There are things that most of us will not like to do. Because we are too into ourselves, so it's difficult for God to actually use us. He's going to use people who have made up their mind to make a difference. You know what it means to be in a service? From six, he says sometimes they will pray until the, the place is full of water. They have to either mop it or use broom to sweep it out. Then I remember my days in jets. Where we, it, no lights, no give you generator, all these things you're talking about. Carry candle mount. One of my friends was reminding me, don't put candle on the wall, just this lamp. This was selling the market, the evening market. But you just put it by the side, people will know that we're inside for prayers. Every time I pray for 10 minutes, he wants it done. Pray for 2 minutes, he wants it done. The service extended to my verse the verse. I know, I know my schedule. All the schedules where they go, how has it changed you? That's one question you need to ask yourself. All of this work, all of this movement, what major thing have you done with your life? The only person that can make your life count is God. And in his presence, you have inspiration and strategy for deploying through greatness. It is in his presence until God drop him and struggle all through. Until God drop that in, my brother. You go struggle all through. I was talking to a friend yesterday, said, Apostle. I'm in a very fixed situation. I said, What is a fixed situation? He said, There is a land before me to buy 1.5 million. It's like money just disappeared. I can't find the money. I can't find money anywhere. It's like in a drought. 1.5 million. It sounds small, but it's a major fight. But there are things that can happen a 1.5 million drop. The answer is with God. The only way to be smart is to be, is to hear him and follow him. That's the only way to be smart. To hear him and to follow him as you don't set a pace 
for a life of toiling, you set a pace for making a difference. For making a difference. I should look at you and say, this is a son of consolation. This is a daughter of, a daughter of consolation. I should look at you and say, this guy is an inspiration to me. This guy is helping me stretch my mind. This guy is helping me to see possibility. Who was Barnabas? Barnabas was an extraordinary man who believed in extraordinary things. Barnabas was a man who took Mark and raised him up. Was Mark having some challenges? Yes, he had challenges. That was why Paul could not go with him at the first meeting. At the first missionary assignment, he couldn't go with him. Because he couldn't stand him. He preferred to go with Silas. He preferred to go with Silas. They preferred to go with any other person. But not with Mark. But Barnabas took him. Who is the leader? It's a person with the capacity to change how people think. And then position them to think in a such a way that their way of thinking generates energy for greatness. That's a leader. Not somebody who keeps showing all kinds of tired wickedness in the hearts of people. All kinds of wicked, wicked thing. You're, the person is just sowing it, just sowing all kinds of wickedness. That's not a leader. That's not a difference maker. How many of us want to reap good people in our lives? Good people. Huh? Don't talk to me. How many of us want to reap good people? You know, when I talk about good people, there are people that when they step into your life, you know God has answered your prayer. We are one person equal 50 person. One person is doing what 50 people can do. How do you reap those kind of people? You first become it. Anything you want to reap first, do what? Become that thing. This is a very powerful principle of life. Oh, God, send me my destiny ever. Who will you be in destiny ever? Who will you be in destiny ever? As if we pray that prayer a lot. Oh God, send me my destiny helpers. God, send me. How can you reap helpers when you are not helping? You have not sown it. A helper is consistent. A helper is diligent. In good and bad times is there. And then you now reap that kind of quality of people. You can't reap what you haven't sown. You have to sow it to reap it. You have to sow it. You have to sow it. That's why my job is not to sabotage people's destiny. My job is to contribute to people. I contribute to them. But I can't sell. But what the Spirit of God will have me share with them. That's where I'm fulfilling ministry. So this five food ministry is given for the equipping, for the perfecting, the old KJV said, for the perfecting of the saints. Now what perfecting has to do with maturing. Maturing. That we're equipping these people to see things from God's perspective. We're equipping these people to live their lives to glorify God. We're equipping these people to help them see things from God's perspective. Equipping them. You shouldn't be a kind of person that uses God. You should be a person who has a relationship with God. We shouldn't be the kind of people that use God. When we get problems, bah, God, man, go to God. Though. Once our problem is solved, we are gone. No, don't be that kind of person. That's not good. A true relationship doesn't run on that kind of principle. It's not about using people. When you have problems, you call them. They pray for you. They stand with you. When the problem is over, you don't think about them anymore. No, that's not kingdom. That's not the spirit of God. Something is wrong with that. That's not kingdom. And the early church is known for reaching people. The early church is what? It's known for reaching people. It's known for reaching people. It's known for making a difference. The early church is known for reaching people. Who 
have you reached for the past two months? Who have you reached for the past three months? Who is your converts? Who have you discipled? When last did you raise somebody up for God? When last did you take your money and said, what are they doing in the kingdom? We need to do this. We need to fix this. When last did they, they move in the kingdom forward, become a priority? I used to tell people, it's easy to get money. Why did I say that? When God becomes your focus and becomes a place of investing, he will ensure that you have no lack for provision and for seed for continuous harvest. When God becomes your place of investing, I invest into God. He's going to open doors, amazing doors. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. By strength, you can't do it. Yeah, I'm telling you, brethren. By strength, you're not going to fit you. You're not going to fit. you go walk tired. From my experience, I've come to learn that there are things you don't get by walk. It's good to walk, but respect the principles of the kingdom. They will open the doors of the harvest. There are things you don't get by walk. Respect the principles of the kingdom. And you can attract those things. God, what can I do? Which area can I be relevant? So winning should be the heartbeat of your faith walk. Soul winning should be the heartbeat of your, of your faith work. So winning is more than the pursuit for church growth. It is the pursuit for kingdom expansion. That's the mentality. It's more than the pursuit for church growth. As I'm talking to you this morning, there are churches in the U.S. that have refused to open. They have called the pastor said, open your churches. I'm not opening. I'm, I'll just be doing service online. Some people not even prefer that doing online is losing their burden and their cost of running a church building and all of those massive things they are spending on. So they just decided to stay on Zoom. The guy in the U.S., great church, said, I will never open this church until God said open it. So people are beginning to look into areas they never looked into as the pandemic hit. As I'm talking to you right now, there are companies that most of their staff has been asked to leave because they noticed they could use like five staff to run their company and they can work from home. So instead of we paying over close to uh, 50 million for this uh, property, let's, let's downsize the place and then use people. Let them work from home. And right now there are companies that are working with robots. Robots, that's the future. Robots, that's the future. Where you go to a hotel and you said, give me water and this robot will just bam, 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 drop the water in your hand. Pick up my luggage, bam, the carriage, your room is room 16, come with me, bam, 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 it opened, you entered, it closed the door, so what do you need? It's the future. Some hotels in different major parts of the world that is advanced, they are running that right now. Why the changes? All of these changes are occurring. This should let you know that we're into something that if we're not relevant in God, we may end up not being relevant in anything. Did you hear what I said? If we're not relevant in God, we may end up not being relevant in anything. That was why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. Why did you think some banks in this country asked people to leave? You used to go to a particular bank, had some friends. Yeah, where is she? So our pastor, they have asked her to leave. The downsides on the place. We don't want much stuff. We don't want much. We don't want to pull away from all this pressure of trying to pay much people. We just need limited staff to manage and run the organization. Now they're telling us uh, branchless banks. That's what they're coming into. And once they start their most of their properties, they start selling it. Just on your app, maybe two or three places, and they're running their business. 
So where the, the nation is going to and where the world is going to, don't you think you need God for strategy, for wisdom, for insight to help you position you to be effective and productive? Don't you think that way? The only place you can be relevant is in God. A guy used to be a very strategic keyboardist in their church and he was a member of this church. His father is a pastor. And then he had a job to do somewhere. He was wondering, how am I going to, who is going to take my job? The guy invented the app. The app does the music. Wow. Is that, that I never knew who could achieve all of that? Situation can lead to inventions. Situations can do what? Can lead to inventions situation and that is why being relevant in God it is God who will continue to make your life to be relevant it is God and that is why you need to focus on him you need to focus on promoting his kingdom this is not oh our church oh my church oh their church no kingdom don't be trapped in the spirit of religion and tradition be inspired by expounding the kingdom. Don't be trapped. By the spirit of religion and tradition of men. Religion. There are very, very religious Christians. Very religious people. There are very religious pastors. There are very religious apostles, prophets, evangelists. It's not the kingdom for them. It's empire for them. It's not the kingdom. It's my empire. My empire. No, it should be the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ expounding, not my empire. If you're not Christ-minded, you cannot be kingdom of God-minded. If you're not Christ-minded, you cannot be kingdom of God-minded. To be kingdom of God-minded, you have to be Christ-minded. Making a difference making a difference that should be your goal becoming a source of encouragement and real motivation a source of encouragement some people can't even pray anymore can't even read their bible can't even study god's word so tired look at my problems look at my problem the more you look at problem the more frustrated you'll be the more you look at problem, look at my problem, look at my problem, my problem is everywhere. Don't exalt problem, exalt purpose. And then problem will be resolved. You can't exalt your problem. Every time it's your problem. No, it's Jesus said, seek here first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, this is the first thing to do. I came from a family where life was so rough, so tough. I've seen hardship of different dimensions. Some people talk about hardship. I've been there. I know what it means for a child to be going to school, but you are at home. I know what it means. To go through tough seasons of life. Like somebody said. He said, Apostle, I did not pick my own gospel and they got out. <laughs> I found it. And there are people allowing hard times and difficult times to make them not focus on God. When your need drives you, you violate principles. When your need drives you, when, when what drives you are needs, you're going to violate principles. Why? You'll be trying to meet the need at the expense of purpose. At the expense of purpose. Oh, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, you don't know what I'm facing. Some people ask God for something that is their excuse today. 
Many years ago, a great pastor in this city, very great pastor, had this sister in their church, was believing God for many things, so actually believing God for a child, and finally she got the child, so the pastor have not, been, have not seen her for a while, so one day he was driving with his wife, and then he saw the sister, said, ah, is he not sister this? So decided to give her invitation. Said, ah, pastor, is this child who? I could have been very, very committed, is this child? Ah. But it was what you asked God for. Is this child? How can you use an innocent child to give an excuse? How can an innocent child that have no business? You came to God. You were crying. You were sobbing. You were depressed. You lost your mind. You were asking God, God give me job. God give me job. God give me job. You were praying. You were crying. You were calling the pastor. You were calling God. You were talking. And then God does it. It becomes your problem between you and God. The reason why most blessings are with head is because God doesn't trust what people will become if you release it. What will you become if God do more things in your life? Will you be found? Will you be found? As you're seated down here this morning, do you know there are dimension of breakthroughs and open door that will come if you don't have roots in God? You will just look at God and say, to, to hell with God, nonsense. I don't even need God's self. I can't even make it by myself. Who is God safe? You yeah, don't even try for that crap for that church. I don't even go again. The blessing is not creating a problem. When the blessing ought to be an inspiration for more service, there is nothing Jehovah will do for me that will make me stay away. God has blessed me in different areas of my life. I've seen the blessing. I've seen things happen. I've seen doors open. But one thing I, I don't want to forget was how God took me here. It keeps me humble. I can't say, no, now I need to come to church whenever I'm going to come to church. God forbid, but who come to that? Who will do that kind of thing? I'm, I'm not that stupid. You! You! You, you, you. We no not get anything anywhere. We no not get basis on ground. Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough. Then lifted you up like this. You. Alasuma Kadanguasa. Lifted you up. El Shaddai. Just, it wasn't just you know, just small drop. Man, see what you go do. Just small. You just small nine just do. The things never even begin to come. And then you are acting like this. How would the other things come? You make those things to be with head in the spirit. You say, if I release this man, increase. This man will change. If I release this man, increase. Giving God your best. Coming out. Coming out when others are sitting back. I know now how I got to where I got to. So how can I begin to form big boy for God? And God, you know my schedules are very tight. I'm very busy. He goes, soon die. What in the kill you, they come. Small, small. God, you know, my, uh, I'm very busy with work. Uh, I'm very, very busy. I, I can't make it. <laughs> Go to UPTH. Take your time tomorrow and visit UPTH. And you will see cases. A friend was talking to me a few, few months back. How they drop dead people as if they just, they don't, they just, he said they don't have respect for the dead. Just throw them off. They walk in person. In short, doing classes on their body. When God lifts you up, he expects you to stay humble when God leaves you. That's why I see a lot of people rose and they fell because they forgot their source of lifting. 
that you humble yourself and begin to give your service to God and begin to, God, if you have brought me to this point, I need to commit myself more. I need to get more involved. I need to be more committed. Somebody tell you, what is that commitment? Well, me. Somebody like me. If I did do something, God, they prosper me. He said, one stand on my way. Our relationship with this severed. I they tell you face to face. Our relationship. You don't lose me. If I did do something for God, and I notice, say, you are trying to obstruct me. You are trying to discourage me. You are trying to... I sow seed. You're going to say, why you go sow that kind of seed? That's the last time you hear me talk to you about seed. I can't talk. Why would I talk to you about it? I made the decision to obey God first and not nobody. And it has helped me. God can tell me, my son, move this money to this place. Do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I will tell you about my harvest. But most of the time, I don't discuss my process because most people can't handle it. How can he just give that kind of thing? How can he just give that kind of money? How can he just give that kind of money? And that giving was helping you to rise. Not giving was helping you to make progress. There are churches you go this morning crowded by the pastors in debt. The pastor is in debt, crowded with people, but no money. The pastor is in debt. But there is another church you go to. There's some few persons, like maybe 200, 300 persons, they are discipling them. They are so blessed. They sit in that place and they are powering some ministries abroad, different nations doing mission work. And you go to a place so crowded with people. The pastor is preaching. He's thinking about the bill that is before him. He's preaching. He's seeing the bills. We have to pay TV bills. God touch somebody in this church. God touch somebody. God touch somebody. You. God touch somebody. I see pastors having seizure, health crisis, and they just slumped. Yeah, that somebody was preaching and slumped. Sometimes when people die mysteriously, it was pressure. The pressure was so much that it affected them. So if you don't know how to trust God as a pastor to do what he has called you to do, there is a tendency that you may not finish well. There's a tendency that you may not finish well. And that is why trusting God is foundational in our work with God. But in your relationship with God, you know how to look at God and say, you are my source, you are my helper. Last scripture and then we're going to close. In Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, Paul said something very important. Romans 1, I like to read verse 17. No, from verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. You, you're going to school. Most of your classmates don't even know that you're born again. Most people in your class, in your department, they don't know you're saved. You copy like them during an exam. Copy like them, jump, run like, how can you be doing that? You're born again. You, don't, you sit down to read your books. You're going to, if you don't want to, going to school is not a force. It's not compulsory that everybody must go to school. Some people will become good technicians. Some people become good mechanic guys. But you cannot go to school. Exam is coming, you're giraffe. No. Your friend is calling you, ah, have you done number three? What is have you done number three? Pastor Elijah Amudu that comes for alliance were very tight friends, close friends in the university. We can even sit close in the exam, we don't talk to each other. If you know him, ask him. We don't talk to each other. We are close friends. He don't say, hey, he don't do number three. What do you mean by he don't do number three? So when I write exams, I don't even go to sit at the back. I sit at the front. I prefer to fail than to cheat. So there are courses I had carry over. And I was good with them that I had it carry over. And then I sat with them and read those things. I've graduated from school over close to nine years ago. I've not even seen how the people look like. 
I've not even collected success later. You cannot grow paper. You can be larger than degree. Life is about growth. So you go to school, you face your school, you go and study a course you're going to struggle with. I don't know who I'm talking to. You're going to struggle with it. You're putting your head. You're putting your head. What are you putting your head for? You know what your capacity can handle. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine. Huh? The man will see. You can't be a believer and you're certain. You write the exam and finish, say, ah, now certain time was. What? What? Now Nigeria, we know. Now Nigeria, pastor, you don't know Nigeria. Pastor, you don't know Nigeria. Which Nigeria? Which Nigeria? Didn't people. I have mechanics that work for me, people that work for me. They have, God has, they have succeeded in their career. They don't even get degrees safe. They don't succeed for their career, for their vision for life. How can you sort all through school? What do you go do when you don't come out? How can you sort all? You don't go feel spare your name well. You don't go feel write things well. All through. Now sort, sort. What are you doing now? How can you ruin your life? It's not a force to be. See, it's not about I'm a degree holder. It's about purpose and destiny. Went to school all through. It's copy here, copy this. I'm not even copy, copy the name of the person they are copying from. Copy their name and put inside the book. The man who is marking now say Adama. He said, "What is Adama has to do with uh, uh, integration? What does Adama got to do here?" He didn't know he was copying until he copied the person's name. Copy his matric number and added to the details. That's the problem. That's why this country is this way. If a man who sought through school become a senator, <laughs> our problem will be here. No be here. Then the tea. Sorry to say this. Even if you tear this country into parts, the problem will still continue in those parts because it's a generational problem. Real people don't like working, but they want to collect the money. It's in every tribe. It's in every culture. So even scattering, it doesn't mean the problem will be resolved. Because the people you're going with, now the same people will come from the old world. Now the same people, not the same people, now they, they come, now the same human media come, you know. The reason why the Messiah we could be able to manage ourselves, but the corruption, it has entered. An officer will stop you, just looking at you, guy, what's in there now? What's in there? What's in there? They pay your salary. What's in there? What's in there? What's in there? What's in there? I want to search your car. I want to search your car. I want to search your car. Search me. You don't find something for your boys. You don't search. What did they ask again for? What did they ask again for? The begging spirit are so rise in this country. People just has some people have seen begging as a profession. There are a group of young men that their mother die every week. Their mother every if their mother don't die this week, their grandmother will die. Maybe their aunt will die. I don't know what that death don't end in their lineage. I don't know. Ah, my mother just died. I want to go and see my uncle. What is it? What is the problem? And that is why we as the church have a vision to take the word of God to people. Paul said, I'm not what? Ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power. The gospel is what? The gospel is what? What is the gospel? What is the gospel? The power of God unto salvation. The gospel brings healing. The gospel brings deliverance. The gospel brings transformation. The best thing that can happen to anybody is to come to Jesus. Is to say, God, take my life like Gloria Copeland prayed. God, take my life and do something with it. Hey, what a prayer. 
God, take my life and do something with it. Today we all saw what God did with our life. Take my life and do something with it. God, take my Because if God does not take it, your life will scatter. You get a scatter, bros. He said, take my life and do something with it. Don't look at where you're coming from. Begin to look at God. Begin to look at his will. Begin to look at his purpose. Begin to stay committed to him. Begin to stay connected to him. Stay connected to his word. Stay connected to his will. And I pray for you this morning that you be an example of the faith. I pray for you this morning that God will use you to touch others. I pray for you this morning that God will use you to transform the lives of people. I pray for you this morning that God will use you to answer the prayers of others. I pray for you this morning that you become a focused man. You become a focused woman. You become a person with excellence and greatness. I pray for you this morning that understanding will come into your heart. Can we rise and talk to God? I'd like us to rise this morning as we, before we close this service. I'd like you to talk to God. I'd like you to talk to God with your life and say, God, take my life and do something with it. That should be your prayer this morning. God, take my life and do something with it. Take my life and do something with my life. Take it and do something with it. Oh God, take my life. Take my life and do something with it. Take my life. Take my life and do something with it. Holy Spirit, take my life and do something with it. Spirit of God, take my life and do something with it. That your life will become an example of a man who trusted God. A woman who trusted God. A girl who trusted God. A boy who trusted God. Take my life and do something with it. Let, let my life has meaning. Let my life has direction. Lord, take my life and do something with it. That will be our prayer this morning. I want to be relevant. I want to be useful. Let me say this to us this morning. Plant the seeds that they have as you will like them. Plant the seed that they harvest. When they come, you will like them. You will enjoy them. It is time to plant seeds that their harvest will make you to be happy. It's time to redirect your step back to knowing what is different between the truth and what is different between deception and manipulation. Talk to him this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege, the opportunity this morning. Talk to him. Say, God, add to my life. Help me to be useful. Help me to be relevant. Help me to live a life of purpose. Help me to live a life of impact. Help me to make a difference with my life. I didn't value. I didn't value. I didn't value. I didn't value. Sister, you are saying to add a value. Brother, you are saying to add a value. You are saying to add a value. You are saying to add a value. Let your life be characterized among men who made a difference. Barnabas, uh, now where I saw in the Bible, the, uh, where Barnabas wrote a book called the book of Barnabas. But this man influenced people who wrote. This man impacted people who wrote Barnabas, a son of consolation. He added value. He was not seeking for recognition. His impact brought him to the front line. He knew what to do. He was doing it. Barnabas. We need some people with that kind of spirit in this house. We need people with that kind of spirit of Barnabas. The Barnabas connection. The Barnabas connection that you're standing out, that you're speaking out, that you're making a difference. The Barnabas connection in the name of Jesus will receive this morning. The Barnabas connection, the son of consolation that will look at you and say, This man is a gift, this man is a blessing. This man is a good man. This woman is a blessing. This person is a gift from God to us. Are you a gift? Or you're a burden? Are you a gift? Or you're a pressure? Are you a gift? What are you? Who are you? It is time to be a gift. It is time to be a gift. I then value. I then value. Making a difference. Going an extra mile for Jesus. Going an extra mile for his kingdom. Going an extra mile. Men are made in the days where others are not watching. 
when nobody's looking, these men are made. God is making them. God is raising them. God is putting something in them. May you be a voice for God. May you speak for God. Maybe if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're watching us by the stream this morning. And you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can just lift up your hand. I'd like to pray for you a very simple prayer. The best thing that can happen to any man is to know Jesus. The best thing that can happen to anybody is to come to Jesus. You could lift up your hand above your head. Do I have anyone like that here this morning? In the absence of that, those watching by stream, you can, if you're watching and you're not saved, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer with us, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God will lead you from this day forward. We want to encourage you to subscribe to on YouTube. It's Fitman Teachings on YouTube. And you can watch us every day by going to finishworktv.com. Thank you for being part of this live transforming service. And we'll pray that the blessing will rest upon you. Until our next broadcast, don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Quickly, we are going to give our offering.